Matthew Monavon is the top receiver in college football. After playing two years for USC and his junior season for Oregon, he decided to declare for the NFL draft. How will the top college receiver pan out in the NFL? Let's find out. The first step for Matthew towards the NFL was the draft combine in Indianapolis, where he would put up the most bench press reps out of any receiver there, record a top 40 speed within his receiver class, impress the scouts with the 7th best broad jump, the 5th best 20 yard shuttle for a receiver, and of course showed his abilities that made him the number one receiver in college football last year. After his pre-draft interviews with different teams, Matthew was a projected mid-first round pick, and there was a lot of hype surrounding him. Deion Sanders even wanted to mentor the young receiver now that he wasn't playing against his Buffaloes in the Pac-12. Finally, Matthew got the call during draft night, and he was selected by the Green Bay Packers as it was off to the frozen tundra he went. Matthew's first game in the NFL would be a tough one as he was playing against the Bears at a rainy Soldier Field, and it was clear that either the weather, nerves, or both were affecting him early on. Matthew was also surprised to see that Teddy Bridge Bridgewater was somehow the new starter for the Packers instead of Jordan Love. This first game for Matthew wasn't without rookie mistakes as he would commit a costly penalty for his team here on first and goal, and that would end up backing them up to a very long third and goal that the offense would not be able to convert. Matthew was looking to make up for that penalty and would do just that as he would finally get his first NFL reception, and he would follow that up with another quick one to convert on a short third and four for the Packers. Two plays later, Matthew almost had the play of the game as he would go deep and Teddy would launch it to him as he got behind the Bears defense but it was just a tad underthrown. In later that possession, Matthew would rack up his third reception as he looked like he was starting to get more comfortable out there on the field. Despite that, the Packers still had yet to find the end zone today and hopefully if Matthew could keep making plays like this, that might change on this drive for the Packers. And then on second and goal from the seven, they would finally find the end zone to cap off this drive before halftime. Matthew wanted to start the second half out with a bang and that is exactly what he would do here as he would turn this simple drag route into his biggest reception so far of the game, taking it all the way down to the Chicago 20-yard line. But an inaccurate throw from Teddy intended for Matthew would end the drive there. Matthew was showing his team, though, that he could be effective in their offense, even without the ball in his hands each play by the way he blocked defensive backs. Matthew would make a huge block on this play and hold it long enough for Aaron Jones to catch the gap he created and take this play all the way to the end zone for a touchdown, as that touchdown would end up sealing the victory for the Packers here in Week 1, as Matthew had a decent stat line in his NFL debut, and he and his teammates celebrated their big rivalry win in the locker room. Things were looking a little bit different on offense here for Matthew in the Packers in week two against the Falcons as Jordan Love had been named the starter this week over Teddy Bridgewater. This was who Matthew was originally expecting to play with and even though it might take some time for chemistry to form together, he was excited about it. Jordan Love was making an effort to try to target Matthew early on here in the first quarter of the game but it was clear that Matthew was still adjusting to NFL defenses and sometimes had a hard time holding on to catches in traffic and of course this was Jordan Love's first first year starting for the Packers as well, so there were bound to be some growing pains this offense experienced this season. The deep ball chemistry is something the two of these wanted to form this season, as it would be a deadly combination once they finally did, but it just wasn't there quite yet. Thankfully, Love had no problem at all finding Matthew on short routes when they needed to pick up a first down, and Matthew would quickly rack up three receptions in the first half, as the Packers were still looking for their first touchdown of the day so far, but it would not come on that drive, as they would head to the second half with still only a field goal on the board for them. The offense really seemed to struggle to find any plays in their game plan that worked for them once they got near or in the red zone this week, but thankfully they were still staying in the game with their special teams unit putting up points and making other big plays on offense like this one to move the ball down the field. Once again, an inaccurate throw from Jordan Love to the end zone would bring up another fourth down for the Packers in the red zone, but this field goal would end up giving them the lead for the very first time, and as I say that, Anders Carlson would miss one and Matthew and the Packers were now down by one with less than a minute to go. Jordan Love knew that if they wanted to win this game, he had to get the ball into Matthew's hands to make a big play, but the defense was all over him this drive. Finally, he would break loose down the field and come up with a huge reception, putting them inside the Falcons' 20-yard line with this dime from Love, but they wouldn't have time for another play, and Matthew and the Packers would drop this one to the Falcons. After that loss, Matthew and Jordan Love worked hard the next week, and they were finally starting to build some chemistry together in practice as well. Hopefully that would translate here in their home opener against the Saints. So far, it was looking like it would be, as Matthew was the first target that Love would go after today through the air, and despite his quick start though, Matthew was still making some rookie mistakes and was a little too aggressive on this block and would get penalized for it. Thankfully, the offense still made their way down the field and Matthew was less than a yard shy from his first touchdown here, but on the very next play, he would finally get it. Matthew finally recorded his first career NFL touchdown, and even though it was a short one, we all know that size doesn't really matter. Matthew went right back to work on the next drive with his run blocking ability, and it was really helping his team out on offense. Head coach Matt LaFleur had finally realized how smart it was to keep feeding Aaron Jones the ball, and it was paying off as the Packers 
Packers kept breaking off big runs. But unfortunately, they wouldn't be able to get a touchdown out of this drive when Jordan Love had to throw it away on third and seven. And after failing to get a touchdown there, the Packers were now down by four to the Saints. But that wouldn't last for long as Matthew would go across the middle and Love would find him with a perfect throw into coverage. And after one broken tackle, Matthew would take this one to the house. And we could definitely see the chemistry between him and Jordan Love finally starting to form now. But even with that big play, the Packers were still down by three headed into halftime. The Packers were going to get back to the ground game to start the second half since it worked so well for them in the first, and Matthew's blocking continued to be a big reason for that success. Although him and Jordan Love didn't quite seem to be on the same page through the air to start this half, it wouldn't take long for the two of them to get back on track together as Matthew would pick up a first down, and Foster Moreau would end up capping off this opening drive with a touchdown for them. The Packers were now up by one, and with the way they were running the ball, it looked like they'd win this game, as one more handoff to Aaron Jones up the middle would get them into the end zone, and Matthew would get a victory here in his home opener, all while putting up his best stat line yet. It was time for Matthew's first primetime game, and they were at home taking on undefeated Detroit. The Packers came out the gate running the ball fast and hard as Matthew was still making key blocks for Aaron Jones, but then Jordan Love got a little too aggressive trying to get the ball to Matthew, and this promising drive would come to an end as he was picked off. Thankfully, that didn't deter Jordan at all from trying to get the ball into Matthew's hands tonight, as he almost had what could have been their play of the season yet on this attempt to the end zone, but was just shy of being completed. Despite that, the offense managed to finish off this drive with a Foster Moreau touchdown, and then it was Christian Watson's turn to get in on the action as he would take this one across the middle and put the Packers up by 14 over Detroit. Jordan still, however, seemed to be having a hard time getting Matthew the ball tonight, though, but hopefully that would change in the second half of this game if the two of them kept making plays like this the rest of the night. Plays like this one wouldn't help them at all, though, as Jordan Love would end up throwing his second interception of the night to end this drive, and Matthew was off to a sloppy start in the second half with a penalty on a third and one, and that would end up resulting in a third down stop for Detroit instead of the first down they had originally picked up on the previous play. Matthew would head into the fourth quarter on a little bit of a better note, at least, as he would make back-to-back -back receptions for the offense and help move them into field goal territory on this one. But on the next third and six, Jordan Love would try to get him the ball once again, but the Detroit defense would come up with a big-time stop, and after a missed field goal, it was suddenly a tie game with the Lions here in the fourth quarter. I have no idea what Jordan Love was thinking with his deep shot on third and two when Matthew was wide open for the first down conversion, but that would allow the Lions to take the lead until Matthew decided otherwise as he would beat his man coverage and take this one to the end zone for six. But somehow, the defense would give up an even quicker touchdown to the Lions offense on their very next possession. So once again, it would be up to Matthew in the offense to march down the field for a touchdown with less than 30 seconds to go to try to send this game into overtime. On first and 10 with two timeouts left, Matthew would come up with a big reception and double coverage inside the Lions 10 yard line. And then what might be the play of his short career so far would be this catch in the back of the end zone to give the Packers a chance to tie this game up. I mean, just look at this beautiful pass and catch. But of course, our rookie kicker would end up missing the PAT, and despite Matthew putting up a monstrous stat line this game, his team was only 2-2 two two so far in the season.